For as long as humans have been around, we've been masters at putting things off. That report for school, it can wait. The mole next to your nipple, hmm. sort it out later. The looming climate crisis brought forth by the proliferation of fossil fuels and mass consumption, what is the rush? On a personal level, procrastination can keep us stuck and stagnant because it steals our time and energy. Researchers estimate that the average person loses 55 days to procrastination each year. And it takes an emotional toll as well. When you procrastinate, you enter a cycle of guilt and disappointment that's difficult to break. You tell yourself, I'm going to start that project tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and you would rather wait on hold with Comcast for eight hours than get started. Thank you for calling Comcast. Please hold. We'll be with you in just a moment. So how do you actually put an end to this practice of perpetual self-sabotage? Well, you could try all the planning strategies, productivity apps, and color-coded schedules in the world, but they won't work until you address the emotional triggers at the heart of procrastination. When you break it down, there are really just five procrastination triggers that get in our way most often. And once you start to identify these triggers at their core, you can finally stop putting things off and get that mole checked out. It's probably nothing. The first trigger is fear. At its root, procrastination is a fear-based behavior. When we have the urge to avoid tasks, it's because our brains are trying to keep us safe from perceived threats. In ancient human history, those who made too much noise were more likely to get cast out from their tribe and therefore more likely to die. Today, many of the fears that we hold onto come from this place. For starters, there's the fear of failure, the fear of being judged, the fear of not living up to our expectations or others, the fear of messing up, fear of discomfort, fear of not knowing what to do next, just to mention a few. While we may understand logically that these aren't real threats to our safety, they still trigger the fight, flight, or freeze response. So we avoid tasks like their yesterday's tuna sandwich. Starting a procrastination log can be a great way to help you keep track of these fears as they arise. Next time you find yourself putting off doing something, check in with yourself and try to unravel your own thought process. What's actually happening right now? What emotions are you experiencing? What are you afraid will happen if you fail? Write it down and see if you can spot any patterns throughout your day. Like the fact that you're always putting off submitting your weekly report because Frank from accounting scares the hell out of you. And to be honest, I don't blame you. By better understanding these fears, we can begin to overcome them. Believe it or not, perfectionism might be the thing that's holding you back. And that's procrastination trigger number two. When it comes to perfectionists, there are actually two different types. You can either be an adaptive perfectionist or a maladaptive perfectionist. If you're someone who takes pride in your work and gets reasonably obsessed about the details, then you're probably an adaptive perfectionist. And no, spending 14 weeks perfecting your podcast intro is not reasonable. Hey guys, and welcome back to the podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Yo, 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 yo. Hey there, friends, and welcome back. I'm Matt, and this is a podcast. Researchers Kevin Stoltz and Jeffrey Ashby define this type as a healthy perfectionist. It's one who derives satisfaction from achievements earned through intense effort without succumbing to harsh self-criticism. On the other hand, if you're someone who feels the need to be in control of every aspect of your life and environment, often to the point where it stops you from starting or finishing projects, you're likely a maladaptive perfectionist. This very much describes my early years as a filmmaker. Being an organized and disciplined person, I've never really identified as a procrastinator, but a perfectionist? Now that was a label that I could get behind. I'd spend months working on a single client project because I was afraid of getting feedback or I just was scared of what they might say. I would often delay releasing personal projects until I felt like they were quote unquote perfect, which never happened. So they would just sit there on my computer never to see the light of day. These days, I find that there are a couple frameworks that help me to plow through perfectionism, and they might help you as well. First, you need to understand that when you're striving for perfectionism, you're working towards something that doesn't exist. But you know what does exist? Good enough. Set a realistic deadline and commit yourself to making your project as good as possible up until that date. You can still care about the details without letting them control your life. Another thing that you might find helpful is to give yourself permission to let the first version of anything you're making suck, because it always does. When you put so much pressure on every pixel to be perfect or every sentence to be flawless, it's going to keep you stuck in a constant state of inaction. So do what film director Judd Apatow refers to as the vomit pass. Just put something down onto the page. You can always go back and fine tune it later. All right, so real quick, what you will, uh, if you're gonna, if you subscribe, eh, kind of hard. I, I, so it started with a few 
you know, that was very, you know. Procrastination trigger number three is self-sabotage. Many of us go through life feeling incapable and unworthy of success. And it's usually pretty difficult to pinpoint because it's on a subconscious level. I know avoiding success makes about as much sense as ordering pizza and then telling the delivery driver that you don't want it, but people often procrastinate to sabotage their own progress and to prove to themselves that they were right all along. Someone with a behavior of self-sabotage might delay starting a project until well after the deadline and think to themselves, see, I knew that I was a total failure. There are two ways that you can break out of this cycle. First, understand that you do have value to bring to the world. If you're feeling self-doubt, it can be helpful to think about all the things that you've done right. Think about the successes you've had, no matter how small, and how far you've come since you first got started. As corny as it sounds, a little bit of self-love can go a long way. And the second thing you can do is to actually stop thinking about yourself so damn much. Focus on your work. Focus on the people that you're creating it for. When you think about the impact your work could have outside of yourself, you can start to overcome those recurring practices of self-sabotage. And then there's overwhelm. You know, when you've got 75 items on your to-do list all screaming out to be done and you don't even know where to start. And so you end up doing nothing at all. Now, this normally happens when the gap between where you are right now and where you want to be feels so far away, and you're so impatient that you want to be there yesterday. Reaching your goal seems so distant and feels like so much work that you can't even begin to think about how to take that first step. But the solution is really simple. You need a plan with a reasonable timeline. You can start by breaking down your large goals into smaller, more manageable tasks, and then spread them out over a long period of time. Sure, you might not be able to tackle 75 tasks today or reach your goals by the end of the month, but can you get two or three really important tasks done each day for the next couple weeks? Consistency is the key to making progress towards your goals. If you put in just a little bit of time each day, you'll be surprised at how much growth you'll see over the course of a year. Can you say, slow growth? The final trigger is actually more of a question than anything else. Are you procrastinating or are you exhausted? Many of us put pressure on ourselves to do more, to be more, and to fit just one more commitment into each day. But if you feel so mentally drained and exhausted that you can't bring yourself to face the task, your mind and body might actually be trying to tell you to take a break. So how do you know if you're tired or just lazy? Just check in with your physical state. If it feels more like a mental block, say you're bored, the task makes you want to throw your computer out the window, you'd rather be eating cheese puffs in a onesie, then you're probably procrastinating. But if you're feeling physically exhausted, as in you've got brain fog, heavy eyes, and deep fatigue, then chances are you're actually working too hard. You're not procrastinating, you're just burnt the f*** out. And that's a sign that you should start to slow down. Clear your schedule and take a few days off. Take a couple personal days or call out sick if you have to. Just give yourself permission to detach from your work for a change. So there's one thing that I want to leave you with. If you find yourself falling into the sweet, sweet, comforting arms of procrastination, there is one thing you can do right now, and that's forgive yourself. In a 2012 study, research found that people prone to procrastination actually showed lower levels of self-compassion and higher levels of stress. And another study from Carleton University found that people who could be more self-forgiving about failures experienced less procrastination later on. So the next time that you find yourself procrastinating, cut yourself some slack. After all, you're human, and this is what we've been doing for thousands of years. By accepting and forgiving yourself for procrastinating, you can actually help to break the endless cycle of shame and guilt and be more likely to get back on track. And hey, maybe you'll finally get that mole checked out. But again, it's probably nothing.